Hi, Zanus Dreher, and welcome to another Wealth Insights uh, training session. And in this session, what I'd like to do is to focus on, let's call it the mindsets. And I want to talk a little bit more about how the financial system feeds the negativity monster within us. Now, what on earth do I mean with that? You see, our belief systems, that that we believe, that is what's going to manifest in our lives. In other words, if we're going to have a life of abundance, and we believe that that is possible, and we believe that we've got it. That is what we're going to experience, and that's what we're going to see, and that is who we're going to be. So our belief systems are really, really important. And for that reason, what we need to do is to make sure that we guard this belief system of ours with everything in our power. And we cannot let someone else take control of that belief system. Because the moment that we do that, we're not in control of our own destiny. So I think that is important. So what do I mean with this negativity monster? I believe this monster is destroying more lives than, than we can ever imagine. Because if I look at stats here in South Africa, then out of all the people that's over the age of 60, according to Banks of Africa, 99.76% of those people will not receive a pension. Now, with a pension, I mean dividends, I mean passive incomes from their businesses, I mean uh, interest, I mean uh, pension funds, provident funds, annuity, uh, you know, all sorts of passive income. 99.76% of all South Africans over the age of 60 do not receive 25,000 Rand per month. There's approximately 76% of all South Africans over the age of 60 receives an old age grant. That is 1,500 Rand per month. That is for a lifetime work that they've put in, that they gave to the community, that they serve, that they help other people. And they end up with 1,500 Rand. So it's because of this reason that I'd like to make this little contribution today in terms of a Wealth Insights training session. And that is that we dare not give up our mindsets and we dare not let other people control that. So the question is, how on earth can the financial system uh, feed us with this negativity? Well, if they mislead us, in other words, if they give us the wrong information and we start to believe that information, that that information is right, then we're going to have a serious problem. And it's for this reason that I think that we should make a distinction between there's actually two types of people. Before I really go <laughs> into the financial system and tell you a little bit more about that, this training session is actually not for those that are not prepared to take responsibility. Because I believe that the financial services industry are serving these people and they are really helping these people. So if you do not want to take responsibility, now is the right time to switch off and to get off my database because there's absolutely even if I really want to, even if I'm, I'm always desperate to help you, there's absolutely nothing that I can do unless you change your mindset. And that is that the new belief system must be that you have to take responsibility and that you can make it happen and that no one but you will help you to become financially free. But unless you're prepared to take responsibility, I can tell you now that nothing is going to work for you. So these people are doing a great job for those people that do not want to take responsibility. But I believe unconditionally that if you're still with me, it's because you want to take responsibility for your own future, for your own destiny, for your own investments. And for that reason, I'm actually talking to you. I'm not talking to the masses. I'm talking to you. Now, let me tell you a little story. And this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this. One of my friends, he's 74 years of age, and he's got a compulsory uh, living annuity. In other words, uh, it was a pension that they, they, they change over to this uh, form of income. And they've got a fund that is managing this. And once a year, this is a great fund. It's one of the biggest upcoming uh, fund managers and, and wealth companies. And once a year, apparently, these people do have a meeting. They invite all their, their clients and they give them like a feedback. In other words, they've got economists that will uh, tell them and the managing director and so forth. And these are learned people and they have suits and ties and all the, the stuff. And then they tell people 
how great and how fabulous they were uh, for the last year and what's going to happen in the future and all with something to eat and something to drink and they really treat the people uh, that are their clients. During one of these little, let's call it events, the managing director and the main economist um, stood up and as part of his speech, he referred to this so-called doctor that, is, that says that he can take 40 cents and turn 40 cents into a million. And then he laughed and the whole crowd laughed. My friend didn't laugh because uh, he knows me. And uh, the end result of that was that he came and he told, told me the story. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, anyone can say whatever they want. But I think at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters, the only thing that really matters is what are the results? What are the results? And the moment that we understand what's, what kind of result we want, then we can start to compare apples with apples. So when it comes to investment, there's only one thing that really matters. And that is, what's the growth on your surplus? And I deliberately do not say investment because we associate an investment, but we've got it totally wrong. Because in order, unless you've got a surplus, you can't take that surplus and put it into an investment. And the only way that you can manage that investment is if you become the investor. That means that you have to take full control over that, that growth, as well as over the risk. Because unless you control someone else's control, and then you've got no say in terms of what is going to happen. Now, I checked this morning, and I went into a website called investorsonline.co.za. And they compare all the best funds. In fact, I think they compare most of the funds. And they divide it between aggressive and moderate and average and offshore and, and, and different categories. And according to them, the best annuity fund under the aggressive portfolio at this stage, or this morning at least, was Alan Gray's. I'm not sure what the fund is called. But it's a 15.4% over the last five years, three years a little bit worse than that, and the last year, not so good, maybe because of the economy. But one of the great, great funds is also um, Alan Grace, and that is the Orbit Global Equity Fund. And that fund, over the last five years, have performed by 25.3%. Now, why do I refer to this managing director or fund manager? Now, first of all, their funds did not perform that well. But secondly, let's assume that you are an average person. You know, it's, you're not rich already. You, you're the middle class. And you want to retire in, let's say, five years or even 10 years from now. How much money do you think must you invest at 25.3% in order to be in a position to retire in five years' time? I'm not sure about you, but we're going to do a little calculation just now so that we can figure that out. But I can tell you that even if you invest all of your money, all of the money that you make per month, that you'll not be able to do that within a five-year term. Now, when I discovered the formula for riches, that was like many years ago in 1987. When I told this little story to my managers, I was at Fox Coast Brokers at that stage. When I told this story to them, they absolutely cracked themselves and they laughed and they ridiculed me that I think that I know better than actuaries and these fund managers with all their degrees and so forth. But you see, there's something that I understand that very few people understand. That person that is the fund manager, that poor person, 90% of the time, has got a degree. That's, that's the only way that he's going to be there, 90%. There may be the exceptions, but 90% of the time. And he's going to have a master's degree, and there's a chance that he even may have an MBA and, and, and a master's degree in terms of that specific fund management job that he's got. But he's getting a pay. He's getting a pay. And then he gets like performance uh, bonuses. And those bonuses can be in the form of, well, there are different ways that they can structure it, but share incentives. Uh, so he, he's got a share option within the company. Now, first of all, that share option actually costs the company absolutely nothing. It costs him nothing on condition that he can convince enough people and get, of course, a good enough growth. But then they compare that to 
the general index and they will tell you, listen, we are outperforming the general index. And because of that, he is entitled to get this bonus and incentives that they are going to get. But he's working for a salary. And the chances are that he's not really invested in the funds that he's suggesting. Now, I see there's a big company at the moment that is advertising that the fund managers invest where they tell their clients to invest. Now, it's very, very straightforward and simple. But all of their money is definitely not in that fund. Okay, I want to repeat this. All of their money is not in their fund. Because I've never met such a person in my life. I was in that game for many, many years, unless the game has completely changed. But most of those people, unless they get share options, will not be rich when they retire. After 30 and 40 years with that company, and they won't be able to maintain their standard of living. Right. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But this is the way that I see it. So, I believe unconditionally that it is not in their interest to tell you the truth. Now, be careful. To those that do not want to take the responsibility, what they tell is the truth. Because that is the higher the risk, the higher the growth. And it is that you must have money to make money. But to us as wealth creators, that is not, that is not the truth. So, what do I mean with the truth? If you are an investor, it simply means that you've got control over the risk as well as the growth on your investment. And the moment that you give your money away to someone else, you do not have that. So the question that I'd like to ask you is, do you control the risk and the growth on your investment or don't you? Because if someone else is doing it for you, there's no ways that you're going to make it within the next five or 10 years unless you reach already. So let's quickly test one or two things regarding our belief systems. And I'd like you to, to participate in and to, to play the game with me. Here's a question that I'm going to ask you, or that a statement or, or rather that I'm going to tell you. And I want you to complete the one word. And that is, the higher the risk, the higher the, well, returns or the growth. Now, what about this one? You must have money too? Yeah, most of you will say to make money. Now, these are belief systems. And if that is part of your belief system, it simply means that you're going to live according to that and it will show in terms of the returns that you're getting. So if you've got that belief system, I can tell you with almost 100% certainty that you do not currently, that you do not get more than 25% than growth on your investment. And I'm going to show you a little bit later on that 18% and 25% is not going to make you rich at the end of the day. So what is the truth? The truth is, and I really want you to understand this because I like to make things very simple and understandable for myself. The truth is, is that is the growth on your surplus taking risk into consideration that's going to make you rich. So what is the surplus that we're talking about? You get an income 90% of the time, almost 100% of the time. This is how we start. We've got an income because we do a certain job. And then there are certain deductions. We call it, let's call it living expenses. And after we've paid everything that we should pay, there's a surplus amount left. And this surplus must work for us. Now, we can live off that surplus. We can draw. We can do different things. And we can think that we invested by giving it to someone else. But that surplus is all that we've got to grow. And once that surplus vests after we pay tax, that becomes your principal or your capital. So we've got two, let's call it portfolios. The one is on a monthly basis, what are we going to do? And the other one is with the cash that we've got in this fund or funds that we've got. And how, how will that work for us? Right. So that is what I mean with the surplus. Now, what do these financial institutions do? How do they feed this monster? They feed this monster by letting us understand and to believe that we cannot outperform them. In other words, that we cannot do it ourselves. That we need to be very, very sophisticated and that we need to, to go to university and, and the jargon and the terminology that they use are incredible. And the proof and the models that they built, incredible. Now, I've been there. I know what it's all about. But when you break it down, the only thing that really matters is what's the growth and what's the risk? And what they want you to believe is that the higher the risk, the higher the growth, and the more money you've got, the more money you're going to make. But that is not the truth. You see, 
When you apply the formula for riches and you understand that formula for riches, you're going to understand that you cannot split risk from growth. And this is exactly what they do. In other words, this is how they feed this monster that's going to keep you poor. So they say, give us your money. We're going to give outperform the inflation of the taxation. In other words, we're going to give you a real return. And you are not capable of doing that. So what do you do the moment that you do that? You break the formula for riches. Because the formula for riches says that you must be in control. Is it possible? Can I make it happen? Do I have control over my life and my investments? If you do not have, there's no way that you can follow this formula to help you to get to financial freedom. It is simply not possible. So what they do is very, very subtle. They say, okay, but give us your money. So the moment that you give your money to them that you've worked for, what do you do? Who's taking the risk? Well, you're taking all the risk because you give it to them and their contract states that they're not taking any risk. So they've got no downside whatsoever. And then, do you have any control over the growth that you, that you need to get in order to get to your, to your end goal? You've got no control over the growth. In other words, you cannot control the risk, you cannot control the growth, simply because you gave that responsibility away to someone else or financial institution. I hope that you see where we are going to go with this. Now, what is going to determine what rate you're going to get? In other words, what the growth on your investment or your surplus is going to be. The only thing that determines that will be your competency. So the higher your competency, the higher the skill levels that you've got, the, the higher the growth will be. But it's actually not 100% the truth because what we do as wealth creators, we offset risk. So the only way to offset risk is by having the competency, by having the skills. So the more skills you've got, the smaller the risk will become. I hope that you're with me. So the smaller the risk will become. And our job is to mitigate the risk. In other words, to take the risk down because it's the risk on your investment that is going to keep you poor. Let's see how the fund managers try to justify this. They say, if you want a million rand net profit, in other words, a, a growth, your, your portfolio grow by one million rand. And if you give us 10 million, then at 10%, we'll give you a million back. In other words, the, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with the growth. It's the amount of money that you're going to receive back. Therefore, if you give them 20 million, they're going to give you 2 million back. So you must have money to make money. I hope that you get this. Now, what if and what is the risk? Well, the risk is that you can actually lose the 10 million or part of the 10 million. What do we want? What if you can lower the risk because you know how, you've got the competency, to only 1 million? And with the 1 million, you make a million. So you've got 2 million at the end of the day. You deduct the original million and you divide through million. That means that you're going to have 100% growth. So now we change it from a fraction, from a percentage into multiplication. So you've got one times what you start off with. And this is what the law of multiplication means. But if you increase your competency even further, the following will happen. What if you can manage this risk down where you need only a hundred thousand to make a million. That simply means if you do that, that you're going to get a growth of 1000% on your investment. What if you manage it down to just 1000 to get still to a million? Well, your growth is going to be 100,000%. So the lower the risk, if you apply the formula for riches, the higher the growth is going to be. And this can only happen in real investment. It cannot happen with where you split the risk and the growth, like in paper assets, like pension funds, provident funds, retirement annuities, unit trust, fixed deposit shares, um, and those kind of things. Even Bitcoins and, and, and cryptocurrencies and, and all of that stuff. You are not in control of that process. And this is crucial that we understand that. So it's the higher your competency is, the, the smaller the risk will be, and therefore the higher the growth is going to be. Now, you've got only two choices in life. You've got only two choices. The one choice is simply to say, well, I'm not going to take the responsibility. And then you're going to work for your money basically for the rest of your life. The second one is to say, but I'm going to learn how this works 
so that I can get financial freedom, so that I can get 1,000%, 10,000%, 100,000% on my initial investment, because over the long period, it's not going to, you won't be able to sustain it and maintain it, simply because there's a law of the ceiling of complexity. And that ceiling of complexity simply says that the more money you've got, the more difficult it's going to be for you to grow that money. And this is what, what they're not saying. They say you must have money to make money. So it's directly the opposite. And we need, first of all, to take control of our belief system because otherwise this negative belief system, this monster, is going to eat you alive. The second one, option that you've got, the one is you work for your money for the rest of your life because you give your responsibility away. And the second option is simply to say, okay, I'm going to learn how to get this growth and how to limit my risk and to really mitigate my risk so that I actually take no risk whatsoever. Now, in other lessons, I'm going to teach you how that works and why is that so important. But for, me, for now, uh, let's go to the computers to see what's the difference. And if I take a thousand rand per month and I want 10 million in 10 years time, and I take my money and I invest it at 15%, and I think you're going to be serious lucky over a 10 year term to get to 15%, because there's not a lot of funds that outperform 15%. So in 10 years from now, you'll have 275,270 rand in success. But you need 10 million rand. So here's a question. What must you do in order to get there? Well, you've got only one of two choices. Either you must give them more, in other words, work harder for your money, or you must learn how to get a better growth on your investment for the same amount. So if I learn how to get 64.58% compounded growth over a 10 year period, I will have 10 million. What if I do not want to do it, but I want to get to the 10 million? Well, then it's very simple. I need to work harder. I need to work for my money so that I can get 36,000 334 rands and 96 cents additional so that I can invest it at 15% in order to get to the 10 million. So what's the biggest financial secret I believe in the world? That is simply this formula. And if we reduce this formula, then it's going to be very simple. My investment growth rate must always be higher than my financial freedom growth rate. But the problem is that 99% of the people that I come into contact with do not know the secret. In other words, they do not know how to get the benchmark to know I need 64, 50 or 80 uh, percent growth on my investment depending on the amount of money that I've got. Or I must take this money and I must really grow it. Because of that, because of that, they in this negative state of mind where they believe that 25 percent is a great investment. I really want to give you my blueprints and my roadmap. And explain to you the formula for riches because it's not going to take long. You'll understand it in less than an hour. In less than an hour, you'll understand how it is possible for me to take on a challenge. And by the way, I took on a challenge about two months ago where I said, I'm going to take five cents. I don't need a thousand rand. I don't need a hundred thousand rand. I don't need a million. Because I've got the competency, I can take just five cents. In actual fact, that was a structure. I don't actually need money. And I can take that money put in investment once I've got a thousand, uh, uh, one rand, and then I know how to apply the formula, and I'm going to show you during a live demonstration how easy it is to do that. In other words, I'm going to take the one rand, and I'm going to convert it into 10 rand like that. And then I'm going to take the 10 rand, and I'm going to convert it to 1,000 rand. And sometimes, just like that. And then I'm going to show you how the process I'm going to follow to take the 1,000 rand and turn it into a million. But I'm not going to stop there, because... As I've said before, there's, there's literally two rules. You know, if you've got a small principle, a small amount that you start off with, it's easy to get a thousand, a two thousand, a ten thousand percent. But once you've got to a million, now you have to duplicate that. So within the next year, I'd like to take the million and turn it into two million. In fact, my, my goal is two million. That's, that's the, the goal. But I'd like to take it to 4.8 million. So I would like you, if you're interested in this, and if this makes sense to you, if it does not make sense to you, no problem, it's perfect, right? But if it makes sense to you, um, then there's going to be a link just below this, this video where you can book your seat. And you're going to experience some amazing stuff, but you'll read more about that uh, by following that link. So if you know about this person that said that this doctor says that he can take 40 cents and turn it into 1 million rand. Um, will you please go and tell him that if, if he referred to me, I really don't need 40 cents. I can do it with half of, I can do it with 20 cents. 
and that I actually don't need 20 cents. I can do it with a quarter of that. I, can, I need only 5 cents. And with a 5 cents investment, and by investing in myself, in other words, my own competency, that I can be there in that category and be in the top 1% of the top 1% in terms of income earners within a year starting with 5 cents. Please go and tell him that. And, and please go and tell him to phone me. I would gladly sit with this man because he's got a problem. And the problem is that he does not know that what he's supposed to know. And as long as he does not know that, he thinks that he's helping other people. But, and he's helping other people, by the way. If you're an opportunity seeker, please carry on. But as a wealth creator, I do not believe that that is help. I believe that is really, really not helping other people because you're not empowering people. And our job should be to empower people, to help them so that they can help them themselves. This thing that we help other people by giving to them is not helping the country. It's not helping that person. So I hope that you're going to go to this little league. I hope that you've learned something about risk and growth and how it works. And I also hope that you understand that as long as you, that you uh, feed or let someone else feed this negativity monster that, that we've got, that we're going to make it very, very difficult for us to become wealth creators. And my wish for you is to become a wealth creator, to live a life of abundance, to, to have the, the quality or the lifestyle that I've got, where you can do what you want to do, when you want to do it, that you can say what you want to say. Isn't that incredible? I can, I can say what I want to say because I'm living my dream and this is what I want for you. And I want this for every other person. So even those that says that I cannot do it, the trick is what are the results and what will the outcome be? Because let's face it, if I can't do it, the whole world will know that, that I'm just talking, right? So uh, if you want to follow me, please subscribe and I'll see you then um, when I see you or at least in the next Wealth Insight. If you're an opportunity seeker and you think this was a lot of nonsense, please do me a favor and please just simply unsubscribe. I will not even know that you've got, but um, there's nothing that I will be able to teach you. So thank you so much for your time. Maybe tell others about this little video and um, I'll see you when I see you. Thanks.